Prabhupada. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory, Srila Prabhupada. How are you? How are I'm, you? I'm okay, Gurad. You were not working just now? I just reached home just now. Just now? Huh? <laughs> Luckily, I'm not late for the class. The school is going on? Yes, Gumash. Right now, summer is going on. Summer school. Summer school. Oh. Yes. Are you translating tonight? Yes, Gumash. Mm. Okay, let me give you focus. Yeah, I want to share the screen. Yes, I, I already made you the... Okay. Oma jnana timarandasya gyananjana shalakaya. I just add you there. Chaksur militanyena tasmai shri gurave namaha. Vancha kaupa tarubhyascha kripa sindhu bai hevacha patita namo 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 namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Recording in progress Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. All right, so we're reading the Nectar of Devotion, and this evening we're reading chapter number nine, Further Considerations of Devotional Principles. And this, we're beginning from the section headed Touching the Deity. Mm. So in the Vishnu Dharmotara, a scripture, there is a statement about touching the lotus feet of the Lord. It is said only a person who is initiated as a Vaishnava and is executing devotional service in Krishna consciousness has a right to touch the body of the deity. <laughs> So we know in ISKCON temples that the deities are worshipped very carefully and we don't allow the public to just go and touch the deity. And generally, the system is that the people who worship the deity, they are the twice initiated brahmanas, and they are allowed to go in to offer the worship to the deity. Without being initiated twice, then you're not allowed to, officially, you're not allowed to enter into the deity room or to do direct, 
to do the direct service for the deities. That means you must be twice initiated before you can uh, dress the deities and before you can offer the arti and before you can cook for the deities on the fire, you should be twice initiated. Now on the altar there are two sets of deities. We have generally the mar the large ones, which may be marble, and then we have a small brass deity. So the marble deities, they stay fixed in that place, but the brass deities, sometimes we will uh, take them out, we'll bring them up and bring them out like on a festival, and there may be bathing in the temple room, and people are allowed to come and to bathe the deity. But not always like that. There are temples, some temples that they will not let you be the deity unless you're twice initiated. Um, Just like if you go to Vrindavan, in Vrindavan, you know, they're quite strict. The, the, only the pujaris who are serving the deities, they will do the bathing. Here in Mayapur, the, the bathing will be done by the very senior, the most senior devotees, all men, no ladies. And that's common also in Vrindavan also, the bathing, the puja, it's all done by the men. Of course, that's in India. In India, the, the system is quite uh, conservative, so they, they follow the same system as other temples because the other temples, like the other Godiamat temples, it's all done by men. They don't have any ladies on the altar. So it's going to also follow that kind of system. But uh, maybe like on a festival day like Gaur Purnima or Janmashtami, they may bring the deity, they may bring the deity of Gornitai or the deity of Radha Krishna from the altar into the temple room and they may allow people to bathe it, but not, like always, uh, not always. So we don't just let everybody just go forward to touch the feet of the deity, but what we do arrange is we have footprints of the lotus feet of the deities placed in the front of the altar and people can come and touch the footprints of the deities.
Just like Srila Prabhupada, we have Srila Prabhupada's uh, Vyasa san, and we have Srila Prabhupada there on the form on the Vyasa san, but we have his footprints down at the, at the feet of the Vyasa san, and people can come, they can touch the footprints of Prabhupada there and take the dust from the footprints. So instead of having everybody go inside the altar to touch the deities, we simply have the footprints there in the front of the altar and everybody can come, anybody initiated or not, they can all come and they can touch the footprints of the deities and they can get the blessings from that, from the Okay, so uh, in India, Prabhupada said in India there was agitation during Gandhi's political movement. During, during the time of Gandhi, the, the low-born class of men, like street sweepers and other people like called, who are known as chandalas, then they are prohibited according to the Vedic culture. They're, pro they're not allowed to enter the temple. Yeah. The reason why they're not allowed to enter the temple is because they have unclean habits. Mm. But at the same time, they are given other facilities so that they may be elevated to a higher position of devotional service. So in order to elevate them, they need to get association with pure devotees. So we see in some parts of India, just like at Jagannath Puri, that's in the state of Orissa, that they, they're very orthodox there in the temples in Orissa, and they don't allow people from non-Hindu families into the temple. So this means people who are from outside, born outside India, you know, like me and, and the Thai, Thai, even Thai people and Chinese people, they're not allowed to enter into the temple because they're not born in Hindu family. And even if you're a Christian or a Muslim, then you, even though you're born in India, you cannot enter the temple. แล้วก็มันต้องเป็นคนแบบว่าคนในวรรณภาพหรือคนคนอินเดียในวรรณภาพเท่านั้นถ้าเกิดว่าเป็นคนต่างชาติเนี่ยแบบคนคนในคนไ
ในการรักษาความสะอาดเป็นอย่างมากแล้วถ้าเกิดว่าอาหารเหล่านี้เนี่ยได้แบบว่าสัมผัสกับคนที่แบบไม่ได้เป็นคนชนชั้นวรรณะที่ดีเช่นนี้เนี่ยเขาก็จะถือว่ามันเป็นมูลถิ่นแล้วเขาก็จะต้องทิ้งทุกอย่างแล้วทําความสะอาดใหม่มีเหมือนกับยามคอยดูไว้อยู่ว่าไม่ให้ใครเนี่ยเข้ามาถ้าเกิดใครเข้ามาแบบนั้นเนี่ยเขาจะใช้ไม้ติง so we don't worry about that we don't go to the temple we have our own temples and we have our own deities เพราะเราก็ไม่ต้องเป็นกังวลไปเพราะว่าเราเนี่ยมีพระปฏิมาของเราอยู่แล้วยังมีของเราอยู่ But if you, the Orthodox Hindu, they have these kind of customs. So Prabhupada explains: a man may be born in any family, then he's not barred, but he must be cleaned. He must be purified. Now, as the Prabhupada s a i a a b o n a s a k e d n ในแบบไหนก็ได้แต่ว่าเขาเอาเนี่ยคนเกิดในวันนั้นไหนก็ได้แต่ว่าคนเป็นบุคคลที่มีการรักษาความสะอาด so they have to go through that process to purify themselves before they can come into the temple เขาต้องได้เรียนรู้วิธีที่เขาเนี่ยทำให้ตัวเองบริสุทธิ์ขึ้นตอนตอนก่อนที่จะมาไปที่วัดได้ Mahatma Gandhi he tried to make people purified Just by changing the name. มหาธรรมขันธ์ทีเนี่ยพยายามที่จะทำให้บุคคลเนี่ยบริสุทธิ์ขึ้นเพื่อที่จะเเปลี่ยนชื่อของเขา Yeah, instead of being known as street sweepers, he had them called Hari Jana, meaning children of God. แล้วคือเขาจะมีการตั้งชื่อว่าเป็น Hari Jana. หรือว่าเป็นผู้ที่เป็นบุตรของพระเจ้า So in India they have this custom like you know they have this class of people who are considered low class and they're given the job to do things like clean the toilets and take away the garbage แล้วบุคคลประเภทนี้นะคะก็จะได้รับหน้าที่ในส่วนของการแบบว่าทิ้งขยะหรือว่าล้างห้องน้ำ So they were considered not clean, and the and the the, the 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 Orthodox Hindu people said they have to take birth again to be purified before they can come to the temple. แล้วก็ชาวฮินดูก็จะเชื่อกันว่าเขาเนี่ยจะต้องบริสุทธิ์ก่อนก่อนที่จะเขาจะมาที่วัดได้ Now, just like they say, people born in a Western body, a European body, or an American body, they have to be born again into a Hindu family before they can come to the temple. เขาก็มีความเชื่อในการในรูปแบบที่ว่าใครก็แล้วแต่ที่เกิดในร่างของฝรั่งร่างของชาวต่างชาติอะไรอย่างเงี้ยคือถ้าเกิดว่าอยากมีสิทธิ์ตรงนี้เนี่ยเขาก็ต้องมาเกิดเป็นในร่างของชาวฮินดูซะก่อน Now they, these Brahmanas, they say that it, you have to, it, you cannot purify yourself in the one lifetime. You have to give up the body and take another body. So Prabhupada said, during the time of Mahatma Gandhi, there was a lot of problem, conflict between. The followers of Gandhi and between the managers of the temple, because the managers of the temple they didn't want all these people, and Gandhi he wanted to bring all his people to the temple, but the people who run the temples they didn't want all these people coming to the temple. Ah, at that time, it was like there were people who came and came to the temple, but they didn't want all these people. ก็ไม่ได้อยากจะแบบว่าเป็นของที่ทั้งเหมาะสมและไม่เหมาะสมแต่ว่าทุกคนคืออยากจะเข้ามาในวัด So Prabhupada said he said anyway he said at the present time the law is that 
the law is the law of all scripture and the laws of all scripture is that anyone who is purified can enter the temple this is supposed to be the law but not all parts of india follow this law like i said in orissa they're very conservative and they haven't opened the temple yet so Prabhupada said, and only one who is properly initiated and who is properly following the rules and regulations can enter the temple and be allowed to touch the deity, not everyone. But if one follows all the rules and regulations and he comes in and touches the body of the deity, then he can be immediately freed from the contamination of sinful activities. And all of his desires can be satisfied without any problem. So, okay, so that's touching the deity. And so the next item is seeing the deity. So touching the deity, that's a very sensitive thing. We don't let everyone touch the deity because people may damage the deity. They may do harm to the deity. But like I said, we can touch the footprints. Okay, but now we're talking about seeing the deity, so everyone can come and see the deity. You go to the temple and you can see the beautiful deities. Okay, so there's a statement in the Varaha Purana about seeing the deity of Lord Krishna in the temple. So a devotee says, a devotee says, my dear Vasudhara, any person who goes to Vrindavan and sees the deity of Govinda Dev is free from the co the courthouse of Yamaraj. Okay. And that person is allowed to enter into the highest planetary system where the demigods live. So Prabhupada explains that this means that even an ordinary person who goes to Vrindavan, he can get the greatest benefit. He may not be any, he may not have any devotion, but he's just curious, he just wants to go and see Vrindavan. 
So just by chance he sees, just by chance he, he, he sees the temple which just like that temple of Govinda gave. So even if he's not elevated to the spiritual kingdom, he's still a sure promotion to the higher planetary system. So simply by seeing the deity of Govinda, visiting the temple and seeing the deity on the altar in Vrindavan, one can get so much benefit. He's elevated in pious life. So it, it's so nice. We encourage people to go and see the deities as often as possible. Oh, really? Okay. Should I repeat that? Well, maybe it was my side. Maybe the, the internet broke at my side, but I couldn't hear. All right. Anyway, you're finished say, speaking. So, yes. so going to see the deity, everyone, the temples are open. You can go. We just ask pe people to have to take off their shoes and they should wear proper clothes to go to see the deity. You, go, you don't go to the temple, you shouldn't go in your shorts. You should go properly dressed. And we should understand going to the temple, it's not just we're going to see the deity, it's we're going to be seen by the deity. The deity is going to see us. There was this there was this one blind man. He was asking his friend, please take me to the temple, I want to go to the temple. And his friend said, why do you want to go to the temple? You're blind, you can't see anything. But the blind man said, yeah, I know I cannot see anything, but I want Krishna to see me. So we should understand when we go to the temple, it's not just for us to see the deity, but the deity is also seeing us. So we should have the right attitude, we must be respectful, we must be clean and pure. We must dress properly, feet should be clean, hands should be clean, don't eat anything in the temple. And behave properly, don't shout and scream. All right, next thing, observing arti and celebrations of the Lord. So in the Skanda Purana, there's a following description of the result of seeing Arti of the deity. So 
If somebody sees the face of the deity while arti is going on, and then he can be he can get free of all sinful reactions. And we may have sinful reactions from many, many thousands of years, millions of years, because we are all eternal souls. And we've been in the material world a long time. So we have a lot of sinful activities, but we can get free of them all just by seeing the arti. Uh, and you can get even you can even be excused from killing a brahmana or maybe you've done some other kind of very sinful activity but just by seeing the deity worshipped and the arti it can free you from the sinful reactions to all of these sins so every day we have different artis, just like in the morning, there's the Mongol arti. Mongol means auspicious, and that brings many people, many, many people. They like to come to temple early in the morning, 4.30, to see the Mongol arti. So Mongol Arti, that, that, and then after Mongol Arti, then Mongol Arti is very popular, and then the deity greetings also, which takes place about uh, at seven thirty. We have the meet, greet the deities, and they play the Govinda prayers and open the curtains so you can see the deity in new dress and new clothes and new garlands. And then there's the Rajbog Arti, which is offered at noon, when we offer a big feast for the deities. But the arti which brings the most people is in the evening when we have the Sanja arti. People come, people come in the evening after been working, after been work, doing the dis different duties all day. They like to come to the temple in the evening and see the deities and chant the holy name. Just like, just like at this time, this is actually time I should be going to RT to see the deity, to see the RT, but because we have class, I'm not able to go. Because here in Mayapur just now it's six o'clock, so this is the time when they have a RT in the evening. So it's very nice to go and see the deities and chant the holy name and it, it, it's very purifying. We get rid of a lot of sinful reactions, but it, it's, we don't just go to get rid of sinful reactions. We go because it's very pleasing to see Krishna and to chant for Krishna. If we just go to the damp temple to get rid of sinful reactions, that's just the mode of goodness. That's not spiritual. That's not devotional service. 
ถ้าเกิดเราอยากจะไปวัดแล้วก็อยากจะไปเฉยๆเราอยากจะแบบบริสุทธิ์ขึ้นจากความบาปของเราอย่างเดียวเนี่ยอันนั้นมันมันไม่ถือว่าเป็นการที่ต้องสื่อสารใช่ But we should want to go to temple to get love of God to get love for Krishna เราเนี่ยควรที่จะอยากจะไปวัดเพื่อที่จะได้รับความรัก Krishna And in the, in another place here in this book, uh, Rupa Goswami de describes about seeing the deity of Govinda. And he he says he said you better be careful. He said you better not look on the form of Govinda, because if you see Krishna standing on the banks of the Yamuna. In a threefold bending form and playing on his flute, he looks so beautiful, he's so attractive, that you will lose your attraction for the family and for society and friends. ตอนนี้นะท่านรูปกรรมสามเหลี่ยมทรงได้บอกไว้ว่าให้เราเนี่ยถ้าเกิดว่าเธอเนี่ยยังถ้าเกิดเธอเนี่ยอยากไปมองราตรีกุญแจที่ที่สถานเสียสักสิเพราะว่าท่านเนี่ยยืนในยืนเป่าคุยอยู่ถ้าเกิดว่าเจ้าเห็นกริชนาแล้วเนี่ยเจ้าจะไม่สามารถที่จะมีความสุขต่อครอบครัวของเจ้าความสุขทางโลกวัตถุของเจ้าอะไรอย่างนี้นะได้อีกต่อไป So in other words, if we become more attached to seeing Krishna, we'll lose our attachment for the material world. หรือในความหมายหนึ่งก็คือถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยเห็นกริชนาแล้วเนี่ยมันมันก็จะถ้าเรายิ่งมองกิชนามาคลายยิ่งเข้าใจกิชนามาคลายมันจะทำ So uh, there there are also different ceremonies to be observed every in the course of every year there's many Vaishnava festivals just like the birthday of Krishna and the birthday of Lord Chaitanya and the birthday of Lord Ramachandra แล้วก็มีมีแบบว่าหลายหลายวันสำคัญต่างๆเนี่ยที่จะเกิดขึ้นในระหว่างปีเช่นวันเดวันเกิดของพระรามของกฤษณาของหลายคน So uh, we have to celebrate these different festivals. It's very important for us. แล้วก็เราจะต้องมีการเฉลิมฉลองกับวันสำคัญเหล่านี้เพราะว่า And we celebrate also Prabhupada's birthday and the day in which Prabhupada left the world. Also, Prabhupada's appearance, Prabhupada's disappearance. That's an important festival. We have one festival. And then also we have also the the swing festival. And we have the d a m a d a r the 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 we have the dam in the month of d a m a d a r Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, celebrating these festivals, just like r a t h i a t r a festival is coming this week on Friday, the r a t h i a t r a festival. That's an important festival also. Which we celebrate. Then, festival of Ratiyatra, is also important festival that we celebrate. Yeah. So, Lord Jagannath, the deities. Usually, the system is that the deity is put on a car, and the car moves through the streets of the city, and everybody has the opportunity to see the deity. พระปฏิมาเนี่ยก็จะเอาขึ้นราชรถแล้วก็จะเอาราชรถเนี่ยแห่ไปทั่วแล้วก็จะทําให้ทุกคนเนี่ยสามารถสามารถแบบว่าเห็นพระปฏิมาได้ and uh, like r a t h i a t r a there's three cars one car for Jagannath one for Baladev one for Subhadra and the cars are pulled by all the devotees แล้วก็จะมีราชรถสามคันคันหนึ่งของจักรนาคันหนึ่งของมลเดฟและคันหนึ่งของสุบัตราแล้วก็จะมีการดึงเนี่ยโดยสาวก And the people will come out and they'll make offerings to the deities. 
หลวงปู่ก่อนก็จะออกมาแล้วก็จะถวายเอ่อให้กับสาวก And so these festivals, uh, they're they're very spiritually powerful, and they they purify everyone who sees the festival. <laughs> it said in the Bhavishya Purana, it said if if even if a, a dog eater, even a person who eats dog meat, who's called that means he's a chandala. It's considered very low class if somebody eats dog meat, and so even that kind of person, that if they see the the deity on the chariot, then he can get freed of his of his sins. <laughs> ด้วยความอยากรู้ได้มาเห็นว่าพระองค์พระขวานบนราชรถเนี่ยนับได้ว่าเขาเนี่ยเป็นหนึ่งในผู้ใกล้ชิดของพระวิสนุ And it's so powerful that not he not only does he get free of his sins but he becomes counted as an associate of Lord Vishnu แต่เขาไม่ได้จะเป็นอิสระจากบาปของเขาเองเดียวเท่านั้นแต่เขาเนี่ยจะได้ไปอยู่ที่แบบว่าที่เขาได้เห็นพระวิสนุ And then in the Agni Purana, it's also stated, any person who is who is very happy to see the worship of the deity in the temple, then he will get great benefit. Well, in Agni Purana, it is said that when one is happy to see the deity in the temple, then he will get great benefit. Well, in Agni Purana, it is said that Uh, if, yeah, finish. Yes. So if he sees the, if he sees how the the deity is being worshipped in the temple, and if he's happy to see that, he'll get the results of kriya yoga. Well, if he sees how the deity is being worshipped in the temple, and if he's happy to see that, he'll get the results of kriya yoga. Well, if he sees how the deity is being worshipped in the temple, Kriya Yoga. Kriya. Kriya. Yeah. So Kriya Yoga is described in the Pancharatra scripture. Kriya Yoga is described in Pancharatra. Pancharatra scriptures. That's about the the worship of deities. Pancharatra is the practice of worshiping the deities. So it said Kriya Yoga is it's a a system. Which is something like the practice of devotional service. Kriya Yoga นะหมายถึงการปฏิบัติที่คล้ายกับการวิจารณ์เสียสละหลักใจ But it's especially meant for the mystic yogis. แต่หมายไว้สำหรับพวกโยกีผู้มีฤทธิ์ Yeah. So by the gradual process, the mystic yogis are eventually elevated to devotional service of the Lord. หรืออีกในหนึ่งเนี่ยจากการปฏิบัติวิธีกรรมนี้นะพวกโยกิจะค่อยๆเป็นค่อยๆไปหรือจนสูงจนเป็นที่สูงสุดของโยกีผู้มีทิฏฐิแต่ก็จะพัฒนาถึงการมีทุนเสียสละใช่ So we have many different festivals throughout the year. We we had the one festival recently. We had the The Lord Nishinga Dev, the Chatur, the Nishinga Chatur is the appearance day of Lord Nishinga Dev. We also have the festival of the Nishinga Dev, which we call the Nishinga Chatur Day. And we devotees, we fasted throughout the day until the evening, and then we had made a big feast for offering to Lord Nishinga Dev and took nice prasadam. We also have the festival of the Nishinga Dev. การทั้งวันแล้วก็ตอนเย็นก็มากินประสาดกันแล้วก็ฉลองฉลองกัน And a week ago we had the snan yatra, the bathing of Lord Jagannath. แล้วมีวิธีสนาพระองค์เจ้าจักรนาสนาน yatra. 
so many people came to, to bathe Lord Jagannath and everybody brought, the, people would go to Ganga and they would get water from the Ganga and people would bring their own milk and yogurt and ghee and honey and, and they were all bathing the Jagannath deities with the different substances. Everybody came carrying a pot with different things in it. So, by per performing these different festivals, by celebrating these different festivals, we get a lot of mercy from Krishna. Right. Who wants to get the mercy of Krishna? Any of you people want to get the mercy of Krishna? I hope you want to get the mercy of Krishna. So what you have to do, we have to, uh, we have to make a nice festival. Every time there's a festival, we should make the festival. We always have a nice Govardhan Puja festival. That's a nice one. So the Ratiatra festival is coming up and many places they do the festival for one week. Because after Lord Jagannath was bathed, after the bathing of Lord Jagannath, then he goes into uh, he goes into isolation or quarantine. Just like people who get COVID, they put them into quarantine for a few weeks. So Lord Jagannath is also put into quarantine after the bathing festival. We don't see him for two weeks. And during this time, when there's no Jagannath on the altar, this time Lord Chaitanya would leave Jagannath Puri and he would go to another temple. He would go 30 kilometers away to where there's another temple. And then he would come back in time for the Rathyatra. So I said the Jagannath deities, they go into isolation for two weeks. And then the, the day before they come out, we observe a festival called the Gundi Chamarjana, when we have to clean the temple. Yeah, Gundicha means a heart. And marginum means to clean. Just like we sing in the Guru Vastikam every day, we sing Shri Vikraha Radhana Nityanana Shringaratan Mantira Marjanato. Right? That the spiritual master is always engaged in the temple worship of Radha and Krishna. And along with his disciples, they cleanse the temple and decorate the deities with beautiful clothes and ornaments. So Gundicha, Gundicha Marjanam, it's a nice festival to observe. Clean the whole temple. You can clean your whole house from top to bottom. 
อุนิเชอร์มาร์เจอร์เนี่ยเป็นสถานเป็นเทศกาลที่ดีมากมากซึ่งเป็นการทําความสะอาดวัดซึ่งเหมือนไปทําความสะอาดจิตใจ And get rid of everything that you don't need. Clean out all the garbage. Clean everything from. Clean the ceiling. Clean the walls. And the more we clean the temple, the more we're cleaning our heart. วัดมากเท่าไรเนี่ยก็เหมือนกับเราทำความสะอาดจิตใจของเราได้มากขึ้น Of course every day we try to clean the heart because every day we chant the holy name แล้วก็ก็แน่นอนอยู่แล้วว่าทุกวันเราพยายามที่จะทำความสะอาดหัวใจของเราพอเราสวดมนต์ทุกวัน So it's very important and we clean the temple and then the next day Lord Jagannath comes We want to clean the temple, make it nice and clean, because Lord Jagannath has to sit there in the temple. And we want Krishna to sit in our heart. Our heart must be clean. So, so then, we, 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 So we clean, we clean the temple nicely, and we have. The, then we bring the Jagannath deities. The Ratha Yatra festival is actually the festival of bringing Lord Jagannath to Vrindavan. We know Lord Krishna. Spent his childhood in Vrindavan, in the home of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. So, so Lord Krishna, in the form of Lord Jagannath, was always very eager to go back to Vrindavan to see his all his friends in Vrindavan. So the Rathiyatra festival is bringing Lord Jagannath to Vrindavan. And Krishna goes to Vrindavan. And he stays there for seven days, and after seven days, then he comes back to Dwarka. He goes to Vrindavan to visit all his friends. He comes back to Dwarka to be with his wife, the goddess of fortune. So we celebrate the Rathiyatra in that mood. Bringing Krishna to Vrindavan. It's very exciting. Mm. So it said the original Rathiyatra festival took place at Kurukshetra. Krishna had gone to Kurukshetra and he met all the gopis there again after a long time. So. And many places they have rath yatra like that. They do it for a week. They have a big parade, and then every night for one week they will have, or throughout the day even they will have a program, and they will have a big arti in the evening, and many people will come, and they will distribute a lot of prasada, and it will go on for seven nights, and then after seven days and nights, then the deities will go back to the temple. ก็จะมีการแบบว่า
พาพาพระองค์เนี่ยทรงออกจากพับวัดไปแบบนั้นแล้วก็ทรงไปอย่างเงี้ยเดินทางไปเงี้ยประมาณแบบเจ็ดคืนแล้วหลังจากนั้นเนี่ยก็จะสุดท้ายก็จะกลับมาที่วัด So that's how they do it in Jagannath Puri, and that's how devotees do it in many parts of India now. They're having a fest; they'll do the festival every night for a week, and then they have the return rathiyatra to bring the deities back. So two rathiyatras, one one week and one the next week. Hmm. Ah, Shatra, na, จะมีประมาณสองสัปดาห์สัปดาห์แรกเนี่ยเป็นสัปดาห์ที่พายุชนะเนี่ยไปแล้วสัปดาห์ที่สองเนี่ยจะเป็นสัปดาห์ที่ So these festivals, we are, we like to observe all these festivals. It's very joyful. All the devotees get in life, and they get a lot of enthusiasm taking part in these festivals. And Sri Lakshmi Vinod Thakur says he wrote one song where he describes about the benefit of different kinds of devotional service. So there's one song, Shuddha Bhakta, and he describes about accepting everything favorable for devotional service. เราไม่แทงเลยชื่อบทว่าสุดแต่บอกกันแต่ก็คือการรับเอารู้สิ่งทุกอย่างที่มันเรื่อยอำนวยต่อการมีความเสียสละใช่ So he's describing you know all the things which are related to surrender to Krishna which will, if we accept these things in relation to Krishna they will help us to surrender to Krishna เราไม่บอกไว้ว่าถ้าเกิดเราเนี่ยยอมรับเอาสิ่งตรงนี้มาปฏิบัติก็จะทำให้บุคคลเนี่ยสามารถสิโลลาบต่อกิจชาได้ง่ายขึ้น So b h a k t i m i n o t h a k u r says Madhavatiti Bhakti Janani Yatani Yatani Kalani Madhavatiti Bhakti Janani Yatani Kalani It's a n y by remembering the holy days like Janmastami and the Kadasi Then it becomes a mother of devotion for those devotees who take shelter of it. I will go to Gandhi. Ma pen, ma pen one sampan, one sampan dan ta. Ne, pen like a land governor, or a pen mother of การอุทิศตนเสียสละฉัน Okay, so we'll stop and ask if there's any questions. แต่เราก็จบคำบรรยายเพียงเท่านี้แล้วก็จะถามว่าใครมีคำถามไหมอ yes you are from uh you were the sadhvi mother yes mother ฮาริคริชนากุรุมาคาราชันเดียดีบุตรพิจิกษาเดรัจฮัมบาลาพิจันเซสอุลกุริชชิลาปะปะปะดาบุรุมาคาราชอินเดนิกเตอร์ออฟดิวอร์ชันเซดว่าส่วนของเอนทุซิอาซึมในระดับของเอ่อไหว้ดิสาดนับบักตีนคือสิ่งที่ต้องเป็นหน้าที่ของพระเจ้าสมบัติและส่วนของเอนทุซิอาซึมในระดับของพระเจ้าสมบัติของพระเจ้าสมบัติของพระเจ้าสมบัติของพระเจ้าสมบัติของพระเจ้าสมบัติของพระเจ้าสมบัติของพระเจ้าสมบัติของพระเจ้าสมบัติของพระเจ้ And does it mean that on the level of Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti, uh, there is no duty to the spiritual master? Is it right or not? It's not right. You need a spiritual master to instruct you in Raganuga Bhakti. You may have a spiritual master who is instructing you in Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, but if you're going to go into Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti, you will need to have the qualified person who is able to instruct you in following Raganuga Bhakti. Yes, Guru Maharaj. You always need the spiritual master. Mm -hmm. It may be a different spiritual master. You know, the the person who is guiding you in the Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, he may say, "No, I said he may say I'm not 
able to instruct you in Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti, but he can tell you, you can go to this person and ask him, beg him, maybe he will instruct you. And sometimes I've done that. People come to me sometimes, they're eager to do Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti. I tell them, I said, I'm sorry, I only do Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. But I suggest some devotee who is more in the mood of Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti. I say, you go to him, maybe he can help you. Mm -hmm. are, yes, you, are, are you interested in Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti, Yavati Sachi? <laughs> no, Karaj, no. We have exam by a Nectar of Devotion and Bhakti Shastri course next uh, Tuesday. And this is a question in okay. uh, yes, our exam. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope I'm right, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Good luck. Oh, thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Exam is uh, very difficult. I'm, I'm afraid very much. <laughs> um, yes, any other questions there, Archana? From, from Vaishnavi Mother Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, Guru Maharaj, my question is regarding the twice initiation for women. Uh, you have previously explained me the, that uh, uh, because it's very conservative in uh, India, they don't give uh, the Gayatri Mantra to ladies, but uh, in Niskon we we can do that because sometimes they ask me and uh, I'm not, uh, I, 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 I'm just a little, uh, I cannot explain them better, but uh, I say them that uh, the Acharya can change some of the rules according to time and circumstances. How to understand this Guru Maharaj the, regarding this uh, uh, twice initiation for women and women can also sometimes worship the deities or how is it, Guru Maharaj? Well, uh, Prabhupada is presenting the Krishna Consciousness Movement on a worldwide basis, you see. And uh, he knows in uh, other countries outside India, they don't have quite the same ideas or the same culture, the same systems as what, as what they have in India where they see the women in a particular way and the women, you know, there's some things like worshipping deities are, you know, generally it, it's always done by men. But somebody, somebody's married to, if a man is a brahmana, the man is a bra brahmana and the wife is also a brahmana. Generally it's like that. The, the woman, although they're, they're not given a sacred thread, but, prob, you know, the women, <laughs> well, Prabhupada, he gave the sacred thread and he gave the Gayatri Mantra to men, but there were some women in the mood, and they complained to Prabhupada. They said, why you only give to the, the men? He said, you should give also to the ladies. We're also doing puja, we're also doing worshipping. So then Prabhupada thought about it and he decided, oh, okay, give the mantra to them. Of course, he didn't give them any sacred thread, but he allowed them to chant the Gayatri mantra. But of, of the two, the, the chanting of Hare Krishna is more important than the chanting of Gayatri mantra. The chanting of Hare Krishna is the most important. The first initiation is more important than the second initiation. Now, the, the, the second initiation, you get the Gayatri Mantra, and it, it said chanting Gayatri Mantra, it can help you to meditate. It, it's a meditation on Krishna, and it can help us to improve our chanting of the Holy Name. It can, if you meditate properly on the Gayatri Mantra, it can help us to improve the quality of our chanting of Hare Krishna Mantra. But it's not absolutely necessary. The important thing is the chanting of the Holy Name. 
for the chanting of the Gayatri Mantra, that will take you maybe to the to the Brahman, as far as the Brahman. But chanting Hare Krishna Mantra will take you into Goloka, can take you to Goloka Vrindavan. So the chanting of the Gayatri Mantra takes you to the platform of the Brahman. But we don't want to, we want to go beyond the Brahman, we want to go into the spiritual world, into Goloka Vrindavan or at least Vaikuntha. So uh, the main thing, the main fo our main focus is on chanting Hare Krishna. And the ladies, uh, the ladies, well, then, you know, it, it doesn't matter so much, you know. Uh, the, the, of course, women can also achieve the supreme destination. From the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Mamhi parta vaya pasritya riepi sru prapayonaya striyo vaishyastata sudras tepi yanti paramgatim. The meaning is that even though one may be of lower birth and means Lord birth means that Papa you and I that we're addicted to bad habits. We have sinful habits, bad habits. But they can achieve the supreme destination. Even he said even they may be of lower birth and he mentions uh, the women and the sudras and the Vaishyas were all considered lower birth. But we can all achieve the supreme destination if we take shelter of the Lord. So that, that's the main point, to take shelter of the Lord. It doesn't, and, and who is of Lord, but in the Kali Yuga actually there is no, there's none of this caste system. You know, somebody may, someone may claim to be a Vaishnava, but actually, uh, or they may claim to be a Brahmana, they may claim to be a Brahmana. But actually in Kali Yuga, nobody's Brahmana by birth. And by birth, everyone is a Sudra or lower. We're Sudras or lower. It means we're lower, but, but we can be elevated, we can be reformed. But you have to be trained and initiated by a bona fide spiritual master. That is the process. And there's a mantra, there's a verse in the scriptures which describes that just like Bell metal can be transformed into gold by the alchemical process. In the same way, any person who is properly initiated and trained by a bona fide spiritual master, they can become a Brahmana. So, become a Brahmana means that you, for the women, the, the husband should also be a Brahmana. Because the man and wife, their karma is combined. Husband and wife, they, they, you know, they're, they're one. The wife is the better half of the husband, we say. Because she helps the husband in all of the duties. And she's taking care of the house, and she's cooking food, and she's giving birth to his children, and like that. And so they're one, you know, husband and wife, and their karma is one. So. A husband and wife, generally a husband should be a Brahman, the wife will also should be a Brahmani. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. But uh, most of the time, Guru Maharaj, uh, uh, husband, um, husband is not devotee, wife is devotee, and um, they are also, uh, for my case, I'm worshipping Gauranita deities, not second initiated. Uh, is it proper, Guru Maharaj? Well, uh, the deity worship is not actually proper until you're properly initiated because Mahajai Pataka Swami, he described it, he said, if you worship the deities without being properly initiated, then it's like, just like playing with doll, like a doll. You know, you dress yeah. the dolls and things. So yeah. you're you're practicing, you're practicing. The actual uh, deity worship begins when you become second initiated, and you worship strictly according to all the principles. Yeah. Which, yes. Which means also yeah. 
chanting, yes. meditating, chanting Gayatri Mantra, meditating on the Lord. Mm. Yeah. So you're preparing for that. Yeah, yeah, I understood for much. But for that, uh, the husband should also be a devotee, right? Guru Maharaj, ideally, if uh, the woman has to get second initiation. Yeah, well, husband has to be cooperative. Okay. He has to yeah. be, he, has, he shouldn't be, un, he, sh he shouldn't be against. He should be favorable, uh -huh. you know. He may not, yeah. he may not practice himself. He doesn't practice himself, but he'll get the benefit from the wife. If the wife is doing, then the husband will get some, be he'll get some benefit from the wife. Yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj. And you see, just like you, because you're practicing, so he's getting some benefit. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. Now I understand clearly, yeah. So you have to encourage him to try to keep him away from any bad habits, you know, like... Yeah, meat eating. Yes, right. Or drinking, these things, you know, you try to... You have to really... You have to cook so nicely that he'll be so happy that he won't want to eat these things, you see. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. I'm cooking, Guru Maharaj, but not really able to prevent them from eating outside. Yes. Cannot understand, Guru Maharaj. Really cannot. Uh, I don't know. But uh, yeah, we are cooking so many things. Um, spending three, four hours in a day in cooking, but still not able to really satisfy. Sometimes uh, have to. They have to weekly at least two, uh, three times like that. Order something from outside and eating. Yes. Yeah, it's not good. You see, yeah, he, 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 yeah. Has, he has to understand how harmful these things are for him, physically, uh, mentally, and spiritually. It's not doing him any good because the, the non-vegetarian foodstuffs are so contaminating. Yeah, the, yes, for the marriage. You know, I remember there was one man in Hong Kong and he told me how he became a vegetarian. He, he went to a restaurant and he ate something. He got so sick that he understood oh. that he, you know, had some seafood or something. And, and he, yeah. he got so sick that so he, he understood. He said he, he got a realization he should become a vegetarian, and he just gave it up. Yeah. And so, hopefully, one day your husband will also come to understand like that, that. He's actually doing more harm to himself than good. He's thinking, you know, he's enjoying, but it's actually, yeah. it, it's very harmful. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. So you have to be patient and tolerant. Like I say, if you cook very nicely, you know, you can attract him. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can try, I'll try in Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, there is one more question, oh, I yeah. think, from Shai Vishnupriya. Yeah. Vishnupriya has a question, yeah. Archana, do you want to translate? Archana? Archana. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Are you going to translate what we said? You didn't hear it, huh? Archana, are you there? Hare Krishna. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, 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 Guru Maharaj. Are you going to translate? Yes, yes. Yes, Guru Maharaj, yes. So, Pajan Madhari Hava Tham, Leung Kiyo Kaka Nupa Sombot, Samlap Kuu Ying, Nya, Wab Ban Pen Thi Nen Nam Kalu Pa, Pohat Samay, Thi Parit India, Nya Bang Thi Nya, Jamai Dai Hai, Kap Tung Nii Wai. So, Nya Hai, Kap Tung Nii Wai, Kwam Jin Samlap Nai Kaan Bu Cha Pha Pati Ma, Nya, Kwa Samma, Thi Cha, 
ทําได้ตรงนี้สําหรับผู้หญิงแต่ว่าต้องเตรียมให้มีแบบว่าเหมาะสมกับการบูชาตรงนี้ก่อนเนี่ยก็ก็จะได้ก็จะสามารถที่จะปฏิบัติได้เหมือนกันนะคะตรงนี้โอเค there's one more question from Vishnu Priya ต้อง yes เชิญเลยค่ะ Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj ท่านบอกว่านามที่สักสิบแม่ฮัมบูฮอบิสิสส I'm sorry for my voice. Uh, yesterday I used my voice for. ได้ยินพี่ไหมอาจารย์ได้ยินได้หยุดแปลแล้วกันนะเพราะว่าเสียงพี่ไปหมดแล้วได้คือพี่จะทำกุลมาราชว่าเอ่อถ้าเกิดว่าเรารู้สึกว่าเอ่อเราไม่ค่อยมีความสุขในในโลกวัตถุนี้เท่าไหร่อะไรเงี้ยแต่ว่ามีความสุขใน devotional service มากกว่าอะไรเงี้ยแปลว่าบัคตีเรากําลังพัฒนาหรือเปล่าอาจารย์นะอยู่เดียร์ฮาริกิชนะฮาริกิชนะกุมาร์ส her question is if we feel unhappy with the material life and happy in the spiritual life is that mean we are developing our Krishna consciousness yes that's a good sign ใช่แล้วค่ะนั่นเป็นสัญญาณที่ดี We're very glad to hear that. ท่านบอกว่ารู้สึกดีที่ได้ยินอันนี้ Thank you, Guru Maharaj, because of your mercy. Really? Yes, because I feel about material world is um, happiness is so shortly something like that. But when I um, go to temple and do devotional service. Enjoy some activity, and I feel really happy, happy in 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 my heart. Um, since like I never been, uh, very very long time after. Uh, I mean before, I met Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. No good. So now you're very happy. Yes. And yesterday uh, we have Ratha Yatra, so I, I I was very extremely ecstatic. What were you doing? Okay, thank you for um, your blessing and mercy me always, Hare Krishna. What what were you doing yesterday? Okay, Gosh, that's that's the last question. But what were you doing? I wanted to know what Vishnu Priya was doing that gave her ecstasy. Uh, she said she uh, in r a t a t Why? What was she doing? Kirtan, maybe. Well, I, I I I sang kirtan very loudly. Uh, I hold the flag of j a g a n n a t h and I walk all um, uh, to follow the uh, Ratha Yatra Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Mm. Dancing, singing. Mm. Is that why you don't have a voice tonight? Yes, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> and when. Um, at the Sanan Yatra, um, I went to temple and I I was preparing about our uh, Abhishek Jao or s o k u r m a r a j I prepare about the fruit uh, and I I try to to doing about seva every time. Then then I go to you to temple. Okay. Mm. Good. Okay. Thank you, Guru. Thank you, thank you, Vishnu Priya. All Because right. of see. Okay. Thank you. So, so no more questions. So we'll stop here tonight. So yes, thank Arjuna. Thank all the devotees. Thank you, Okay, s h i l a Prabhupada ki jai. Gorbhakta Vrinda ki jai. Jai, Guru Maharaj.